Have you been wondering what the sensor is going to be in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? Is it going to have a BSI or stack sensor? Will it be the same sensor found in the Canon EOS R3? Well, if you stick around, I've actually got validated specs on the sensor for the Canon EOS R Mark II. Details coming up, but first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. The information I'm about to share with you about the sensor for the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, whether it's BSI or stacked or neither, comes from a trusted source, a source that's been a friend to this channel for well over three years. Well, for three years, because I started this channel just three years ago. Earlier today, I reached out asking what type of sensor the Canon EOS R6 Mark II might have. There's been speculation that it's going to have the same sensor found in the Canon EOS R3. But there's been a lot of conjecture going around, and I was really hoping to be the first to break this news. Well, here's the answer to that question. I was told the R3 sensor or a very close relative. Okay, I know what you're thinking, and I've been doing this channel for three years now, so I can tell what comments I'm going to get if I was to just leave things at that point. Or a very close relative? That in no way indicates whether it's going to be BSI or stacked. So I followed up with another question, and this time I asked, Will it have a BSI stacked sensor? And this is the response that I got. A very succinct, yes sir. So there you have it. The Canon EOS R6 Mark II is going to have a BSI stacked sensor. 24 megapixels, full frame CMOS. That's really a big deal. According to my source, it's either going to be the same sensor found in the Canon EOS R3 or a variant of it. But the key here is it's going to be BSI and stacked. And what that means is, well, we're going to see many performance benefits across the camera as a result of this new enhancement. And so while it's only 24 megapixels, I think when you see some of these new capabilities that we're gonna get from the sensor, that you're gonna say, well, maybe, maybe this might be a really good upgrade after all. So obviously one characteristic we get with BSI stack sensors is better low light performance, and that's gonna translate to better ISO performance and increased dynamic range, potentially to maybe 15 stops or more. I don't really know the number, but the key thing is better low light performance, better ISO performance, and of course, better dynamic range. And that works really well if you're doing stills or video. This is something that I've been looking for more in the successors to the R6 and the R5. Better low light performance, better dynamic range, better color production. And these are some of the benefits we're going to see from a BSI stack sensor. And another big improvement is we're going to see an awful lot of throughput. So from the sensor to the image processor, all the way to the storage, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is going to have just better performance than the predecessor, the R6. But that plays into another capability, the, the reduction of banding or rolling shutter. In fact, with this new sensor, we shouldn't have any banding or rolling shutter in any way whatsoever. Nothing noticeable. So that's a really big deal. These new capabilities that we get as a result of a BSI stack sensor, although it be just 24 megapixels, is an incredible set of performance across stills and video. And while the R6 was 20 megapixels, and this is not 25, but 20% larger in terms of resolution, that's a big deal. And what's really unique about all the rumors that we're seeing on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is a lot of these specifications are more tailored towards stills rather than video. There's an awful lot on the video side I'd like to know more about. But the R6, especially with that new 135 millimeter, F1.8 L series image stabilized USM lens. Wow, talk about better street photography, portrait photography, or coupled with other lenses like a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. The R6 is really designed for, again, portrait photography. It's designed for any sort of nightclub or low light situations or scenarios like that, venues where you don't have an awful lot of light. And in terms of high speed continuous stills, it's gonna be able to give us 12 frames per second mechanical, but what I'm truly wondering here is what it'll be able to deliver in terms of electronic. We've seen the R10 and the R7 delivering 23 and 30 frames per second respectively, but the R6 Mark II is really supposed to be more of a mini R3 like the R6 was a mini 1DX Mark III. And I know what you're thinking again. You're wondering where the Canon cripple hammer might strike this camera because the Canon EOS R6 Mark II will likely see a price increase of around one to $200 over the R6. And that puts it at around $2,700. That's considerably cheaper than the $6,000 that the Canon EOS R3 sells for. So how will those capabilities that we see in the R3 from the BSI stack sensor be somewhat reserved or pulled back or crippled in the R6 Mark II? And I don't really know, but from a video point of view, 
I would certainly like to see all I brought back to this camera. Well, it was never in this camera, but we had it in the 70D, the 80D. We had it in the EOS R. It wasn't in the RP and it was taken away from the R6, but it's in the R5. I really want to see all I brought back. I also want to see that 30 minute record limit gone, which we will. It's gone from the R10. It's gone from the R7. It's gone from the R3. Well, actually the R3 has a six hour record limit, so it's not completely gone, but can you tell me anybody that's been recording on a camera like the R3 for six hours without a break? Yeah, certainly not 6K60 because I don't think there's a CF Express card big enough to handle raw or all I. The real question to me at this point, knowing that we have a BSI stack sensor, 24 megapixel full frame sensor, 12 frames per second mechanical, dual SD cards, UHS-2, I wonder what all that other information is going to be like. Yes, we know it's going to have a better low light performance, better ISO performance, more dynamic range. I'd like to know the numbers, but what I really want to know is how this camera is going to compare against the R3. And when we see a price difference of some $3,000 or $3,300, how's this camera going to be crippled compared to the R3? Well, one other good thing that's going to come out of this is if you were saving and looking for the Canon EOS R6, which I know some of you have been waiting for that we're looking to pull the trigger on the R6, well, we're going to see a discount on that camera. The R6 is going to continue to sell alongside the R6 Mark II. I don't know for how long. Maybe it's until Canon gets rid of all its inventory. I don't really know, but there'll definitely be some bargains to be had, just like the A7R4 is on sale $500 over the A7R5, which just got announced. And as of yesterday, you still couldn't pre-order, but hopefully pre-ordering has begun that's another exciting camera too. So the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, I think with the BSI stack sensor, even though it's only 24 megapixels, certainly brings up the street cred on this camera just a little bit more. But what I think doesn't matter. What do you think? Are you interested in getting the Canon EOS R6 based on its current specs? Or are you interested in getting the Canon EOS M6 Mark II? Or are you looking at getting other cameras in this price point, such as the recently announced Sony, a7 IV that was announced back in July and I think went on sale shortly thereafter. There's a lot of good cameras out there and I think that the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is definitely going to make up for a lot of its shortcomings. Yes, there's going to be no 30 minute record limit. Hopefully they're going to bring all I back, but some of the other video capabilities in the R6 I didn't think were that great. You only got 40 minutes recording in 4K and with this being a 24 megapixel sensor, I'm really expecting that we're going to see something like 6K oversampled 4K, which is a definite improvement over the 5.1K oversampled 4K. But again, what about heat tolerances? Will they have better tolerances in the heat management software to allow us to record for longer? Or are we going to be stuck recording for something like 50 minutes or 40 minutes? We'll just have to wait and see. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, go ahead and choose or go ahead and click subscribe, followed by all notifications. And the reason why you want to choose all notifications is so whenever I publish a new video on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II or any other camera body, by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video, you'll get notified by YouTube so you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, saving you from chasing all those Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, all your favorite websites and YouTube channels. Because when you're in a rush, I cover all the major camera news and rumors from all, bland, blands, all brands and platforms here on The Ordinary Filmmaker. So please go ahead, like, subscribe, and choose all notifications. We'll be back soon. Hopefully not today. This is my third video today. And I think based on this, I'm not going to do a live stream. I'll probably do a live stream tomorrow or on the weekend because I think three videos for me is more than enough in one day. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.